It all boils down to this. The campaign is built and live. You know what mindset the online users who are engaging with your ads are in. Let's get to work on optimizing your traffic. As we said before, there are a number of ways you can view your data. And we have created pre-filtered tabs to give you easy access to it. I would like to call out a few specific tabs though that we think will be of help the most in your day to day. And note that there are many different ways to optimize. So don't just stop at these suggestions. Keep exploring and you'll find the perfect strategy that works for you. Let's look first at the optimizations you can make by site. I'll remind you that our smart bid does a lot of the heavy lifting to optimize your presence on every publisher we partner with, but you can take that even further. Take a look at the site tab provided for you at the top of your home screen. Here you will get a breakdown of every publisher that you are being shown on. The smart bid will shift attention to more conversion minded users. But note that you also have complete control over your site by site presence. When you are looking at a specific campaign, each publisher will display icons on the right side that allow you to increase or decrease your bids by 10% increments or block placements altogether. Is a placement coming in a bit too expensive? Don't block it yet. Start by lowering your bid to that placement. When your CPC is lowered, it should bring the CPAs down as well. Are there placements that are doing really well? That's when you should raise your CPC bid to take over more volume and scale at profit. Ultimately, if a site isn't working out for you, simply block it from the campaign for now. Between your bid adjustments and those taken care of by our smart bid, your buy site control will be a key tool in hitting your goals. But when should you start making these adjustments? Here is where we ask for a bit of patience. Our algorithm needs to build learnings. And if you block a site too soon, you could be missing out on many potential users that we simply haven't discovered for you yet. Try and allow for at least 50 clicks per publisher before blocking sites outright. And if you have great control of your buy site performance, you still have more options to expand. Let's look now at our audience data. We mentioned in an earlier lesson that we sit on a mountain of data and it's all available for you to use. We work with many excellent third party data providers and also curate our own data to provide you with pre-packaged groups of people that fit your advertising focus. You can target users anywhere from broad demographics like age and gender, all the way down to specific interest groups like auto enthusiasts or people with pets. But what happens when you don't know what audiences to go with? Well, we've got you covered. If you take a look at the audience tab for one of your run of network campaigns, you will see that we display the data by group so that you can decide later if you wish to focus your attention to a certain area. We actually give you the data upfront on which users are engaging the most with your content, giving you the confidence to reach new groups based on data and not mere guesswork. And of course, because it's not just about the numbers, but also about creative engagement, we have ways to improve your VCTR Let's look finally at how to optimize your creatives. In the previous lesson, we noted that your VCPM is your scaling tool and your goal should be to raise the VCPM as high as possible to get more volume, knowing that the VCPM is calculated by multiplying your CPC by your VCTR. You may want to focus first on maximizing that click-through rate to help keep your costs low. And this is where the creative tab comes in handy. You will get a breakdown for each of your creatives and can use this information to pause or resume traffic on the ads that have weaker or stronger click-through rates. But beyond just pausing or resuming creatives, we also encourage you to dive deeper into your trends of your ads. Maybe you'll notice that the keyword car does better than auto 
or that black and white images are doing better than images in colour. The key is to use this tab to identify what new strategies you can bring to your ads as you evolve on the network. And once again, we also have tools that will take care of that for you. Are you noticing a pattern here? Revisit those Fiverr courses we mentioned back in Chapter 2. Also, head over to trends.taboola.com, where we give you up-to-date breakdowns of what is working by category, platform, language and location. And while we're on the topic of improving creative performance, my last piece of advice here would be to test, test, test. Trends and user behavior are constantly changing. And so you are not going to find a one ad fits all solution for all your campaigns. Your ads will experience creative fatigue, meaning that they will eventually be a time where the same ads may not resonate with your audience as strongly as they once have. Moreover, pop culture topics, the news, current events, they are all changing at a moment's notice. Someone's interest in an ad may relate closely to what is going on in the world. And so you must stay on top of your creative performance to keep those click-through rates high and your ads visible. But again, those aren't the only ways to optimize your campaigns. Making buy site bid adjustments, targeting the right audiences, and optimizing your creative performance are all key aspects to forming a strong foundation of growth on Taboola. But we also want to be sure you have the tools available that suit your needs. So play around with our other tabs and you may discover something new. I'll see you over in our final short lesson where we wrap everything up. I want to express an early thank you for sticking with us this far. I'll see you in the final lesson.